everybody, it's Dr. Michelle Drake here at the Drake Center in Encinitas, and I'm here today with Nicole, and she's gonna ask me some questions that are frequently asked about uh, cancer in cats. All right. Dr. Drake, what is cat cancer? So cat cancer is um, really similar to human cancer in that it's a, a cell type that has kind of gone crazy and multiplying uh, and causing um, you know, a problem in your pet. How will cancer impact my cat's health and quality of life? So cancer, just like it is in humans, comes in many, many forms. Um, there's mast cell cancer, there's lymphoma, um, there's skin cancer, squamous cell carcinoma. Um, so it really depends on the type of cancer and the location of it as to how it will impact your cat's life. Um, some are very aggressive and happen really fast and others are slower growing. So it really does vary tremendously with the type of cancer that it is. Um, but uh, regardless, um, it's not good and we need to catch it early. <laughs> What are some of the most common types of cat cancer and what are their symptoms? So again, um, lymphoma is, is probably one of the more common cat cancers that we see. It's uh, intestinal lymphoma generally in cats. They can have it other places, but it's generally intestinal. Um, skin cancer, squamous cell carcinoma, which is from usually from the sun, but it can just be something that just happens. Um, and we'll see that on their face, their ears, any place the sun gets, or in their throat or their tongue. Uh, another common cancer in cats. Uh, we do see bone cancer on occasion, lung cancer on occasion. Uh, we'll see uh, mast cell disease, which can be on the skin or even in the spleen. Um, so there actually are quite a few cancers, um, but those are some of the most common ones that we see in cats, unfortunately. How will a veterinarian diagnose cancer in my cat? So on physical exam and on lab work, um, we occasionally will find things uh, that are uh, you know, part of the exam. I can palpate a kitty's feel the belly and sometimes find an enlarged spleen or a tumor in the intestine. Uh, but quite often it'll be coming from owners saying, hey, something's not right with my cat. Remember, cats are really good at hiding illness. So if your cat's showing any signs of anything, weight loss, eating a little bit less, hiding a little bit more, certainly if you feel lump or bump, or if your cat's vomiting more frequently, um, or having blood in its stool, or blood in its urine, or showing difficulty urinating. Any of these can be signs of uh, cancer or other kind of illness in your cat. If my cat does have cancer, what type of treatment options may be recommended? Yeah, so again, the most important is for us to get a diagnosis of the type of cancer, and then depending on what we come up with, we'll determine whether we were gonna recommend surgery or chemotherapy. Um, so it really just depends on the cancer type. Why is early detection and diagnosis of cancer in cats so important? Um, early detection is always helpful. I think we, all, we, we know in humans why it's important because it's better to find a, a small tumor than it is to find a large tumor. So uh, in an oral exam, for say, I might find a very small bump on your cat's tongue uh, or somewhere on its roof of its mouth or something, and that may be a very early cancer. I'd much rather find it that way than show up a year later, and now they're drooling and they have a very large mass in their tongue and our options are, are, are more limited. So, um, it, or if your cat's vomiting and they have lymphoma, uh, we can actually put some kitties in remission and even sometimes cure it. So um, it really does help if we can catch things earlier. So annual exam, super important, uh, twice a year for older cats. And uh, certainly if you see anything out of the order, bring your cat in for an exam. Last question, why is it so important to avoid self-diagnosing cancer in your cat? Well, um, I always tell people, I can't look at a tumor and tell you what type it is, so I certainly don't think owners are able to do that. Um, so if you're self-diagnosing that way by looking at something and saying whether you think it's benign or, uh, or not benign, uh, you're unable to do that because I'm not able to do that either. We have to get a, a diagnosis of it, and that can require x-rays, biopsies, uh, lab work, uh, sometimes abdominal ultrasounds. Uh, so really, uh, we do need to do diagnostics to diagnose it, and getting a diagnosis is the first step to getting it cured. Um, and certainly helping with the quality of life. So uh, anyway, if you have any questions, uh, give us a call at the Drake Center. We'd love to help you out.